President Donald Trump is ramping up military spending here in the U.S. by 10 percent. Yeah, China also announcing a rise in spending by 7 percent there. It is an increase, but that would also be the smallest increase China has seen in about seven years. Until last year, China's military spending had gone up at a double-digit pace ever since 2010. For uh, more on how U.S. military spending stacks up against China, we're joined uh, by CNN military analyst Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling. So good to see you, Lieutenant General, being with us here. Uh, we do want to start with that military spending story. As we see the headline this morning that China is increasing their spending by 7 percent, U.S. bumping up theirs by 10 percent. I want to show you a look here at worldwide military spending, though. Uh, U.S. spending dwarfs the rest of the world uh, as we take a look at, at how it all plays out there. Uh, what do you make of the numbers? Well, a couple things, uh, Christy. If I can go to China first. Uh, I was in China in 1998 as part of a military delegation from the National War College. And it was fascinating for me back in that year, they were showing what they were attempting to do over the next three decades. And they have gone according to plan all three of those decades. I've been back several times to uh, Beijing uh, since then. And they have always had about a 1.3% of their GDP uh, allocated toward defense spending. That has not changed. And that's significantly less than what the U.S. has in terms of spending. The 7% increase this year, as you just said, is about what they've had over the last couple of years, up and down, but it's lower than what they've had recently. They are on a path to become a regional power, not a global power. When you compare the charts that show the United States against the next seven countries, there's often people that will say, hey, we spend more than the next seven and five of those are our allies. That's true, but it's also because we're the only global power and we have operations being conducted all around the world with a professional military force. And when I mean professional, or uh, when I say professional, I mean uh, a group of individuals who join the service out of their own free will and are not drafted. So all of those things play a part in the amount of spending we have, having to do with pay for personnel, global operations, and an unbelievable amount of acquisition of various uh, advanced level platforms. All right, let's talk about Russia. And, and David Petraeus, what he had to say about the motives of uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin. Let's listen here together. It's very clear what Vladimir Putin's objectives are. In many cases, they are unacceptable to us and NATO and our our allies and partners around the world. Uh, having said that, there could be some convergence of interests when it comes to the defeat of the Islamic State and Al Qaeda, and perhaps the stopping the bloodshed uh, in Syria as an overall objective as well. Do you agree with that? And do you see any point, uh, General Hurtling, where the U.S. and Russia could work together? There are certainly always uh, engagement possibilities with other countries, Christy. And I think General Petraeus, who's a good friend, had, had it just right. Uh, we've got to be very skeptical, skeptical excuse me, of uh, Russia in every regard because of their strategic goals. They have stated outright that they are willing to try and disrupt the West, uh, disrupt NATO, and disrupt the powers within the EU. And they are doing that in a variety of ways. They have also become engaged in the Middle East in some ways and, in fact, have committed war crimes in Syria. So whereas it would be very good to continue dialogue with the Russians, we've got to be very skeptical and very careful uh, about how we do that dialogue. Being on guard. And, and on that point, I want to show something that you posted on Facebook, this picture. And, and underneath it, you quoted, for the record, I've met with Russians in my house for dinner multiple times, multiple places. Don't know how many were spies, but always suspected all of them were reporting on me just as I was reporting on them. Help us understand that <laughs> dynamic and that atmosphere. Are you constantly on guard? Are there moments of authenticity between you? Yeah, there is. There are always moments where you can connect with your counterpart, which I did, but you also have to be very careful. When I was commanding forces in Europe and even before then, I spent the last 10 years of my career either in Europe, Iraq, or Afghanistan and dealt with the, the leaders, not only the military, but some of the government leaders of 49 different countries in those two areas. And what I found was First of all, you always have a note taker in the room who can jot down what's going on because you want, don't want to engage in what's called engagement fratricide, where you say one thing and maybe one of your, your coworkers or your colleagues says something else during the next meeting. So you always want to get your story straight and you always want to have a record of what's going on. 
you do have to engage with these people. But when you do that, you should always be telling your boss that you are engaging. And I engage okay. with Russians not only in my home in, in Wiesbaden and in training centers like Grafenvir, but I went to Moscow and several of their training sites on several occasions. And Russian delegations often came as part of our Council of European Armies, where we had all of the commanders of Europe together. And we would always make note of what was said, who engaged with who. And part of it is just keeping record and making sure you mm -hmm. knew what had to be done. Uh, as, so the as meeting well itself as, isn't the problem. It's the reporting that it happened is, is what's well, important. The record, yeah, it's the record keeping and the reporting and informing your boss, whoever your boss might happen to be. All right. Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling, uh, we always appreciate having you on. It's so good to, so good to see you again. Thank you. Always a pleasure, Christy. Thank you.